Our next sculptural piece is called the Burgers of Calais, and it was um, created by Auguste Rodin, who is um, probably the most influential and important 19th century sculpture artist that we're going to study. Uh, Rodin is going to visibly represent the imprint of the artist's hand on a given work, uh, which means that most of his pieces are molded first in clay, then later cast in bronze or cut in marble, usually by a workshop. And um, so he had people who worked with him and for him, and then he, like, Constantine Brancusi and then he definitely puts the finishing touches so it's pretty similar to what uh, Peter Paul Rubens did. Uh, so Rodin's technique was very different than the sculptures of the past because he didn't copy from classical bust or using traditional poses as had been done for centuries. Rodin would use live models and depict energetic and passionate figures. He's really most known for uh, The Thinker, if you guys can uh, picture that one in your head. Um, the Thinker is actually part of a larger, much larger piece called um, The Gates of Hell, and The Thinker is actually perched on the top of The Gates of Hell. Um, there's now other different sizes of The Thinker that um, is uh, displayed all over the world. There's multiple, many, many, many of them um, that you can see. Uh, but uh, this is another piece that is just uh, probably even more um, symbolic of, of what Rodin was trying to accomplish as a sculptor. Um, so he um, created the Burgers of Calais in 1885, and it's over it's just a little bit oversized. Um, it's seven feet in height. And this statue is going to confirm Rodin's status as a major sculpture because this was um, the city of Calais was um, you know, offered a commission and there was a competition among sculptors to submit what they wanted to create. And the um, leaders of Calais chose Rodin to create this piece and it was to commemorate a local event in the Hundred Years War. So. Um, it was meant to display the courage and civic virtue of the city of Calais burghers. And burghers are the leading residents of the city. They were, you know, the political leaders. And so um, just to remind you guys that the um, cities in the Middle Ages were often walled in and had gates to get in there. And there were, you know, keys that in order to get inside and so um, in one of the hands of these men are the keys to the city and um, I'll kind of show you guys that a little bit later but the purpose that Rodin wanted to do the significance of this was to um, display the courage of these men in 1347 Edward the third of England offered to spare the besieged city meaning he wouldn't destroy the city if six leading residents known as burghers surrendered themselves for execution. Now, the fact that they willingly were going to be giving up their lives showed tremendous courage and um, emotional, uh, it, it definitely shows some emotional impact on each of the men's faces. Um, they were dressed only in sackcloths with rope halters and carrying the keys to the city. Though it is unknown to them at this point, the king is actually impressed by their encouraged, uh, by their courage, and he spared their lives. So Rodin conceived the figures of being displayed on a low base, basically at street level, so people could get right up to it and examine the the sculpture. Um, this was to suggest that the viewer that ordinary people like themselves were capable of noble acts. So he's trying to put them on the same plane as an everyday person. He also does this um, because he's not trying to show them as calm, idealized, heroic figures. He's trying to capture how these ordinary men look in various stages of uh, what they're about to do. So some of their faces would show resignation. 
some show despair, um, and it's uh, some are very emotional. He exaggerated their facial expressions, lengthened their arms, and greatly enlarged their hands and feet and covered them with um, what looks like heavy fabric. It shows not only how they may have looked, but also it showed how they may have felt and how it was so difficult to take each step as they were heading toward the gates of the city. The intense realism in terms of its psychological honesty is um, surprising for the people who commissioned it. Um, it wasn't um, taken well because when they commissioned it, they expected it to be this grand heroic piece of the these six men. And what they see is um, average people, but that's they missed what Rodin's point was. Um, but Rodin's willingness to stylize the human body for expressive purpose open the way for subsequent sculptural um, abstractions. Um, so the central figure in this is a man named Eustache de Saint Pierre with large hands with the keys to the city and a noose around his neck as if he's ready for execution. And the details are reduced to emphasize overall impressions. It was um, commissioned in 1885. Um, the town council at Calais said it was inglorious because they just really wanted a single allegorical figure. But in 1895, more than 10 years after Rodin presented this first piece, it was eventually installed in the entrance of the Jardin du Front-Stud on a pedestal that was divined by the city architect um, and then also an octagonal gate around it. And Rodin didn't like that installation because this impressive base that it was placed on was not the way he intended people to see this. Um, he intended people to be able to walk around it. Um, and so the parallels of Paris being besieged during the Franco-Prussian War, that happened in 1870 and Calais, being in besieged by the English in 1347, um, he, like that's something that's going to definitely influence um, what the um, what Rodin was doing when he was trying to create this. There are multiple pieces of the Burgers of Calais throughout the world. Obviously, there's still one in Calais. The central one that I have right here is actually from the Norton Simon Museum. That is, um, they actually have a large, many pieces of Rodin's sculptures, including the Thinker. Uh, but this one is what we see as you enter, uh, go to the entrance of the Norton Simon. Um, they also have one in Paris. I know that they have one um, in um, other parts of Europe. And that's because, again, this is done by lost wax casting. So they have the molds. And so they were able to create multiples of the Burgers of Calais. Uh, Auguste Rodin is really one of the most famous sculptures, um, sculptors in um, modern art history. And in Paris, he has, um, there is a museum that is dedicated just to Auguste Rodin. So um, if you like sculpture and you're ever in Paris, please try to get to that museum because it's um, a little bit out of the way. Uh, there's Rodin pieces in the um in the Impressionist Museum, the Musée d'Orsay, but there's some of his best work is at uh, his own museum.